that will make you pay for being Dave Courtney or Colton every opportunity they get. Someone always wants to be a Dave Courtney or Colton Leach. They want to be your mate to get so far, and then they will get they so use far, them. and then being your mate is actually stopping them getting any further. They so do use us. They well do. Done. Of course they do. They will use you. Of course they do. No one understands the importance of the pecking order. Your biggest tool was your mobile phone. Of course. It became another weapon. If you want to say how many people can you get to come down a pub for you mm. on Saturday night and have a fight for you, I doubt very much if you're getting He can bring up 15,000 <laughs> that will pay their own fare <laughs> and go to Belgium. <laughs> and go to Belgium and have a fight for you, you know what I mean? Did you ever come across Lenny McLean? Yeah, Boy, I sure. did a lot. Yeah. Out of those two, who do you reckon would win a fight? Welcome to the show. Thank you very right, much. Nice to see you again, Doug. Nice. Yeah, mate. It's nice to be back. Have you boys, two boys together. Let's roll the way back. When do you remember first meeting Colton, Dave? Um, I went to a fetish party and I see this gimp. <laughs> and I unzipped the thing and he went... I fell out. And he, <laughs> and he just jumped out and went, I see you, punched me in the mouth and we've been good, mate. <laughs> but I have the two balls in my eyes. <laughs> um, I, I, I think, 1990. I think, yeah, look, the, yeah, the rave scene, the rave yeah, scene just started. Yeah. So the, the first time I ever proper spoke to you was at the Paradise Club. You come down right, with yeah, the girls, yeah. 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 So what are we talking? Late eighties, are we? Late eighties, nineties. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, yeah, which was about all the same and time. That's where, yeah. that's where uh, you introduced me to Dave Lejano, the, the Dave Lejano. Yeah, because, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, he died, didn't he? Yeah. The goodness is old. So you had the, you had the doors north of the river and you had the doors south of the yeah, river. Yeah, yeah. What was it like back then, the nineties, when you were both running your uh, own There firms? really was a little divide north and south until the actual rape scene. There generally was a little yeah. north and south thing. I was, I was saying this yesterday, I said the pills and everything else, it dropped a lot of barriers. It disappeared yeah, all of yeah. the... All the of walls that, yeah. fell, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, and everyone started yeah. travelling, going across, yeah. mixing and that, yeah. But, but well, it was a well-known well. quantity with a, a very large, heavy firm around him from where he, he come from, you know, and them old West Hammers crawl out from every part of England, oh, yeah. don't they? they but it. the majority of them are hanging around <laughs> We had this convo did. yesterday, yeah, yeah, didn't yeah, we, Colton? Yeah, yeah. We had this convo yesterday yeah, about yeah. the West Ham yeah. lot. Lovely. Well, he, he had that lot around him, yeah. and I had all the sort of, so I, I, I live in South London, that's bandit country, yeah. I had all mine. Yeah. Yeah, mine was most of a little bit more ethnic than his yes. at the time, yeah. you understand yeah. what I mean? So, yeah. you know, I, I was surrounded more by and were you building your were you building your business up to have more and more doors and to get more and more doors? Not at really. The time? I, I, no, not not really. I think I think. Um, a lot of time it's sources for courses, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you like to say if you need to. We actually, easy. we actually, rather than started fighting yeah. each other for a for for contracts, I think we came to a very grown up medium and a very good understanding. Yeah. You know, it'd be very silly. His little lot falling out of my little lot and my little. Yeah, there's, there's hundreds of people involved here. A lot, a lot of people would get seriously yeah. mucked up. So it's just easier that every so everywhere he came, that I was working the doors, he was a guest with whoever he had. Mm. Vice versa. And, yeah, yeah. yeah you know, it was, it was, but we always nice got on, didn't we? Yeah, like, all the years. Beautiful. And, uh, and uh, yeah, you know. There's a few times I've had to call upon him for a little bit of help. You know, what I mean, yeah. he, he can. It's, if you want to go and say, can't how many good friends can you count normally on one hand, you know? If you want to say, how many people can you get to come down a pub for you mm. on Saturday night and have a fight for you, risking getting hurt or getting nicked and all that, how many people can you give a warning to and say, come down a pub for me and have a fight for me on Saturday night? I doubt if you'll get 10. Mm. I doubt mm. very much if you'll get 10. He can bring up 15,000 mm. that will pay their own <laughs> fare and go to Belgium <laughs> and go to Belgium and have a fight for you, you know what I mean? So, it's got its pros and yeah, cons, you yeah. understand? I mean, so uh, there is certain times when I needed numbers just for a show of force and r rung him and he's come over when I've had to turn up somewhere and look a little bit heavier than I was at the time. And he's brought two or three hundred, all got West Ham scarves <laughs> standing behind me. So by the time I go to have my argument with this bloke, I've already won, and I they're all like <laughs> they're all hammered up because I'm, I'm, I'm going, I love you. <laughs> 
Right. I've been on the doors up in central London, knowing on a Saturday night you've got yeah. the Tottenham, the West Ham, the Chelsea's all turned up your door. Yeah. What was that feeling like knowing you were probably not radios back in the day, you were the front door and you've well, got to turn you, these fellas listen, away? It made, it made genuinely tough, good fighting group of men. Right, when you all you had was your lungs, and if there was ever any trouble, you had to go, help me, and run in and yeah. do it. You couldn't actually go, and trouble at exit number five, mm, yeah. and I need some assistance, or none of that. Mm. Yeah, and it weren't the worried about the Tottenham West Ham Arsenal, it was when all the Northerners come down to London. It's different. And you had... Everything changed, didn't it? Yeah, That's you it. had 5,000 yeah. Newcastle supporters down there for the day. Yeah. 5,000 Liverpool supporters down there. 5,000 Manchusians down there for... Yeah. That that was when... And they was coming down there for a row. Yeah. And, it, and, and it turned men into... Men, like that, like I said before when I was doing that show, you never get another Lenny McLean, them sort of... Yeah. Them sort of creatures, you no. know what I mean? They just... And... Um, it, it made bonds, friendship. You know, you were fighting for each other's life at the time, you know, then... Yeah, but there was a lot of, uh, you know, like, <coughs> we, we socialised quite a lot as well, like, on the nights off, didn't we? It was out a lot. Yeah, certain clubs. Out, and, yeah, out five uh, yeah, or six yeah, nights a week. Yeah, and, fucking, well, you was out for eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, was a, I was a going out, man. I but no, but, out. yeah, and, uh, you know, you do your stuff, do the thing, but you, you, you always end up... We sort of always sort of had the same sort of clubs, didn't you? Yeah, you, you got you your own little little corners manner. and all that. Yeah, yeah. And just like, but that's the way it worked. But yeah. that's the only way it could work. Mm. So what was the what was the change like then? So before sort of the mid eighties, everyone was having tear ups on the doors. People were coming and getting larruped, and it was just full on fight. Going see so if, if it, you could nick a bird, pull a bird. It was like, and then it went into the ecstasy world. It went into the ecstasy world, and everything just sort of calmed down. And then you yeah. come out of the ecstasy world, you went into the cocaine world. So everything went crazy. Yeah, again. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, that, and that's that's yeah. still out there. That's that's, that's yeah, the nasty that, bit of it. Yeah. And the booze, yeah, because the booze disappeared for a while, didn't it? Yeah, but it, well, it, you know, used to bring your own. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was allowed. I was allowed. <laughs> <laughs> no, but. Yeah, it just, uh, it broke a lot of barriers, like I said to you, but I think, like, when you come out doing the doors in the 80s, I mean, th these, like, you could be in a club with 20 geezers and 19 of them would have a broken glass in their face. They would build yeah. glass to each other, in each other, yeah. And then, but then you, you're in clubs with three, 4,000 people yeah. and you've got no incidents. It's, it's and like, and the, it's people that, the people that got into the raving at the beginning were not, not the wowy, druggy, Ravy kind of people. They were football hooligans. Yeah. yeah. Right? They were yeah. football yeah. hooligans. They were people that got off, got an hard on on the fighting on the set, you know, and they had to replace. I've, I've said this before. At, at one certain year, they made it all football, all seated. Mm. Well, that's changed the whole dynamics of what it's, what you go there for. You go there at one end to stand in the middle of 15,000 people all with the same scarf on going, yo! Right, that's only That's really only That's addictive. <laughs> that's Moorish. Then for eight and a half days a week, you're a greengrocer. Yeah. But on Saturday afternoon, yeah. you're down there. In, it's so exciting that you'd run over and kill someone because they had another scarf on, mm. right? And now they've made it all seated. You're not even allowed to jump up when they score, so I'm going to go sit down. Mm. And they had to replace that feeling where you're all going like that, mm. right? They made it Saturday night. There's raving. There's a, yeah. something called a rave. Yeah. You can go You can go to a, a rave and take this pill. Don't worry about I'm shy, I can't dance. If you don't want to be shy, it costs you 15 quid. But what it did, it, it and released... you're not shy no more. That, that tension, what Dave said about it... it it and put then that had, tension had, on the dance floor. Of course yeah. it did. It, it you, released you, you it. You had 500 people on the yeah. dance floor all doing the same thing. Yeah. Mm. The big the ones well, that was normally out Saturday like after, Yeah, <laughs> on top of the speaker <laughs> with no shirt on. <laughs> Colton, put your clothes back on. Put your clothes on. Yeah. So... Did you but, find? Did you find then in that nineties when it went that way, late eighties? No. Did you find that all your men around you all just mellowed down a bit? Well, I can't they, about that. Not fully no, mellowed fuck, down. You know, not fully. They, 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 they stopped taking steroids. They, they, they could yeah. mellow down. Yeah. Yeah. On a Saturday yeah. night when they'd had a pill, yeah. you can see a different side of them than you'd thought that they ever had because you saw them in a different light 24 hours a day. That was a tasty bit of kit. Yeah. And I'd never seen it dripping with sweat. Mm -hmm. I'd never seen it like that, you know, yeah. floating with the wind and all that. I'd never seen that. So you saw a different side of them. I'm not saying it all mellowed, but they, there was... 
There was a six hour, seven hour period on a Saturday night where you could see someone in a different light than you would. Yeah. The rest of the week. And our 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 rifle steroids back in the day. Most of them, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, fucking hell. Not every every single one of my lot took steroids. I said to you, let's go down the nightclub. Yeah, they'd have a pill and then fucking jab their. I think between us, we had the biggest ones here. We had the biggest ones. Yeah, yeah. There weren't there weren't a bigger firm than ours. Yeah, I I, I generally don't believe. Oh, I'm talking about monsters. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some different people. What, so what, can, you, can you remember any? Can you remember? Can you remember like four or five men? You go. They were monsters of men on the door. Yeah, Birmingham John Marcus. Yeah, from Marcus. Margate. Yeah, fucking. You know, yeah. I had Wadley, didn't I? Yeah, Wadley. So Ian Wadley. Yeah, twenty-four Jesus in charms. Right. What's that? Ian Wadley. Ian right, Wadley. Right, right, yeah, twenty-four in charms. Billy Jesus Isaac. Christ. You know, there's there's so many people. Everyone was there. But it was like there were. But what they said that image, it were like the in the days of of old, people looked at Dorman to be six foot four, yeah. and that was fucking hell, seeing the size of that kid. But, but the days changed. It's how wide you are now, yeah. isn't it? It's that yeah, bulldog yeah, image. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. the pit bull in you, you know yeah. the grey. And you had you know. to be a big, strong geezer to be a Dorman then, because. It wasn't like you're all on camera, you're not allowed to hit someone. If you hit someone now, the doorman has to, the owner has to take you down to the police station and get you near. No, you had to battle, so you had to yeah. be a big old lump mm. to handle 200 football hooligans kicking off on the dance floor. You couldn't be mine and your size, yeah. and you know what I mean? Even if you're a good fighter at uh, uh, our size, mm. 10 blokes jump on you, you're in trouble. Yeah, you know, you yeah. had to be out there. Mm. Yeah, you is, had there to be is there, is there, Three or four names that you can name who you would not want to get in a tear up with back in the day. Of course, who would they be? I would say Marcus Redwood, Ian Tucker, Ian Wadley, yeah. Sid, yeah. Sid. Colton, what about yourself? Yeah. Well, me. What pe- what what men would you name and you go? I wouldn't want to have my mum. Mum. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I'm frightened of his mum and all. Yeah. I'm frightened. No, the, the the thing is, like, if you look at someone. I don't look at them like a tear up. Look at you've got to respect them, yeah. and what they, they're capable. You know, and I, I think you know, some some people are better fires some days than other days. You know, yeah. everyone has good days and bad days. Yeah. But anyone that stands there, you know, goes toe to toe. You've got to respect. Yeah. yeah, and there's two different and types of naughty. Yeah. There's naughty that you can have it as a doorman right there and bum bum do the thing. And there's a tall man. Or there's someone else that will actually. Uh, clock that and go around your house tomorrow morning yeah. at half past seven when you're on the way to work and do you on your drive mm. five handed with a bat each. Mm. Yeah. Right? Then now try and throw me out for sending drugs. Right? Yeah. Right? And that happened all, you know, it did, weren't all on the actual door having the tear up, it mm. wasn't it. You know, the clever ones went round and yeah. done it in the day. The, 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 like the, the brave scene first started up in the 80s because it was no, it was so mellow it was all love the love yeah. love thing yeah, but then the it changed yeah 1991 and yeah. the booze stopped, they started getting the booze license they put they it in the club they called it they called it and then, love drug yeah. yeah but then that's when like people were doing drive-bys the guns were coming out weren't they but they started getting more and more common and, you know, that's what happened that, 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 that happened the first night I went up to up, up the Paradise Club to see you Oh, it was a drive-by. Drive-by. Yeah, yeah. When it, when it, well, Dave, didn't it? Yes. It went, shot him to shut the wall. Yeah. He came in and went, me, he went, you can't. We just had a. <laughs> so, sorry. Uh, we had this row. And um, they, they fucked off in the motor. And um, what was left of them? Yeah. <laughs> For their friend, I wouldn't see him real. But yeah, next thing you know, come by. Because he, he always stood on the front. He went, come here, he went, that fucking thing in the, in the wall, there's a bullet there. He said, that, that was for you. It was free, yeah, it yeah. drove past. Yeah, just went bum, 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 bum at yeah. him. Everyone hit the floor, including me, sorry. Yeah. Was, there oh. any, was there any times working the doors when it come on top, when it, there wasn't enough doorman to look after what was going on there? Yeah, of course. What, there was there. Do any occasions yeah. you remember? Yeah, yeah, there's some odd, yeah. Yeah, yeah, some, uh, some odd ones up at the yacht club and things like that. Yeah. On the door, on, on, on the door. And like, the, the drummer bass nights are yeah, fucking not, not like, so when much. we done the ministry on yeah. a Sunday night yeah. that like I could have 18 doormen like I'd stroke like normally they have 10 level and like and they go we want a black doorman I'd have to get all black because of drum and bass yeah. and Tim Westwood and he used to roll the crowd up yeah. but you had to be on your toes there you know uh, like but I don't know I think it's like anything you know you do, you're not going to win the yacht club the yacht yeah. club on yeah. the embankment yeah, the boat, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. That, that's, that's, that, 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 they all, that would all meet on the embankment and yeah. to get onto the boat, they had to come down a little gangplank. Yeah. 
I found some people coming yeah. down. Yeah. That was a good party at your oh, club, wasn't it? Mental, yeah, mental yeah. stuff. Yeah. Was, and you saw people in terrible states. I remember, yeah. I remember being in there one night with him, right, me and Brendan in there, and it was Halloween. What year were roughly talking? Oh, I don't know. We're talking ninety-one, something okay. like that. Ninety-one, it's, it's I'll Halloween. Say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Copy, and yeah. as he's walking through, he's walking, he's walking along like big steps, right off his trolley, <laughs> right, right off his trolley. And all of a sudden, they put for five seconds, they put a, a, a video film thing on the wall of a devil going <laughs> with all fire. And he has actually believed he's so out of his head, like, looking at it, going, <laughs> and he's looking around to see if anyone saw it. I've got a bit of eye contact with him, and he's going, Do you see that? Do you see him? Do you see uh, him? And I'm going, I'll see him. I see him. <laughs> and he's come running over to me. I'm wetting myself laughing. He's crying, talking to me, going, I ain't done nothing. I haven't done nothing. I said, wait here. I said, I'll find out. So, and I'm running over to grab hold of this not to go, oh, I have got a funny one over here, mate. Right? You know, it, it was, it, it was yeah, a very, very funny yeah. time, wasn't it? Very, very funny time. Very sexy times. Yeah. We, um, I was, I was, I was, well, right. Fucking hell. Little goings on down there. No, yeah. like, everywhere, I think. The b yeah. boat parties on the side, back to sea, you know what I mean? When someone yeah, got yeah. stabbed after the shot. Yeah, someone pulled a gun out and he got stabbed. Yeah. I don't know who done that. Where's that? Back to sea? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think he was working there that night. Yeah, he was <laughs> on the barge, yeah. Someone jumped out, let off five shots, missed yeah. everyone, and then it was Shot empty. me fucking car up. I just had it all fucking, like, you know, the, like the kind of in you know, like the BMW. I, I picked it up that morning, the cunt's fucking gone, dun, 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 done the motor and all. <laughs> Emptied the actual gun and then realised it was empty and you should have started to run away by then, but yeah. didn't. And then yeah. they caught him. They give him a couple of extra belly buttons. You said you said to me, Dave, in our, our podcast we've done a couple of months back, your biggest tool was your mobile phone. Of course. Everyone what, today. It's what you know, isn't it? Yeah, and you, know. Carlton, as well. Your mobile phone, you know, you know, you know, anywhere well, you, you are in the country. When we those like that, no, you know, yeah. there's always no fucking mobile phones. Mm. You, know, you had those things you. You know, you'd have to go, pager use, use, yeah, or pager like, you know, or something, like, yeah. That, that weren't, that's what but, I'm saying, that was in the era of of actually but, going, help me, or yeah. ringing. But working with a mobile beginning. phone, it became another weapon. Mm. It became because of, course, yeah. of what, what was on there, who you know. And, you know what I mean? Was there any people coming into the ministry or any of the clubs you had, you thought, oh no, here we go. Of course. Dave. Dave. <laughs> 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 Were there people used to clock though, going, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, 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 wherever he was, you yeah, know. And yeah, he, he obviously didn't want to be known as a main player. He is a main player, and he might have, once he's in there, you know he's got another 25 yeah. dealers in there. Yeah. There's 25 dealers in there, all carrying a thing with a pocket, right? and he's running the thing. And if you know he's in there, then you'd know you've got Ag yeah. in there. Yeah, you know. Was there, was there times, Colton, when you were in there, you knew someone slipped through the net, got in there, for oh no, I've got my eyes on him, something's going to kick off later. But the only way they would slip through the net is if one of your own people would allow them. Yeah. That was the thing, you know what I mean? You learn you learn all the tricks of the trade, yeah, didn't you? And all, all the and, things. And, 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 and there is a sixth sense that you learn as being a doorman or the, or the governor of a pub that for whatever reason it is, I can't even describe it, you can actually go, it's going to be agony tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you'd get it in your field, you yeah. know, you'd go, oh, this ain't going to go right today. Yeah. But you but just knew. The good thing like, it's like ministry, because it was like that, like the 12 and then went 18 hours. Yeah. Most people had gone to work. So by like sort of three, four o'clock in the morning or five, that was where they went for a few hours after. And it, uh, I think that uh, the ministry at its height was when it was full of, and, it, you, and I, you could walk in there, there would be like, Fucking forty percent dormant, weren't they? Lumps. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All lumps, but the, from all around. It London, was their, their, their playtime. They'd long, gone to every yeah. other club where they was. And then they'd have a few hours, a little breather, and then they come down. Yeah. But everyone knew each other. Yeah. There was always a respect when they're yeah, in there. Yeah. In there, there yeah. might have been. I mean, I might, had they all met in other places, different. It, it might have kicked off, but in yeah. there, it was all about playtime. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We all had our own little bits of territory mm. to run. Most of the other time, but there was a big boys playground. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, I get it. What was it? What was the years? What were the years you run indoors for? Up until when, roughly? <sighs> until I got too old. Yeah. Until I couldn't run away. Are you? Yeah. Are you? Are you like in into the two thousands? Two thousands. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was, I was doing. Uh, 
Uh, the, 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 the millennium night. Yeah, like, on you know, the millennium like, night, I was still working. When we were young, then, Doris, Doris, yeah, like, like yeah. you know, 30s, uh, yeah. which would be our height, yeah, and the yeah. little yeah. firms. 35s. Like, I always thought to myself, fucking, how old do you go on for? Yeah. And I thought, I don't want to be a 40 year old doorman or a 50 year old doorman. Cause but when you get to 40, you think. And all of a sudden, someone goes, oh, you couldn't pop down, could you? Like, yeah. help us out. Like, we've got a bit of bag, clean yeah. the clam up a bit, and you end up like that, and you still get involved. But, I always thought, I don't want to be that old man yeah. standing on the door. A doorman fighter, like, listen, you know a I mean? fighter on the door, sportsmen and athletes have got um, uh, the, the prime of their career a lot earlier than that, right? At 40 and 45, you are still in your prime as a doorman. Yeah, because you, yeah, you, you... You know, you've learned yeah. things, you know, you've got to do your own little bit of fighting in your own club doorway with everything you know where the ashtrays are the fire things you know the locals who's the bad ones to come in who you don't need to come in if they're already in you can't come yeah. in you've learned all that and knowledge you've been so new don't get on yeah. right right right, right. You, know, you know and if they do you go like stick in your little corner so, so, yeah. so saying you're don't 45 you behave, you know, yeah. you're not a respect, silly you know. yeah you're not a silly old doorman at 45 no. you're, 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 you're knowledge you're boy, well yeah. knowledge no, still at a very tasty bit of kit mm. at forty-five and fifty. What was yeah. what was your drug of choice in the nineties, Dave? I'm afraid mine was the cheap one. I'm, 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 I like to be a whiz. You love to be a whiz. I didn't like going to sleep in case I missed the something. <laughs> and it's a god's honest truth. I would, and there's people here that can, I can I can prove this to you. My my thing was I would stay awake. Say just say for instance Monday day, Monday night. Right, which would I won't stand at home watching telly. I'm working Monday night and Tuesday day, and then sleep Tuesday night, mm. and then I'm up all day Wednesday, up all Wednesday night, up all Thursday, and sleep Thursday. So I slept three or four days a week, maybe. Yeah, but you, I had twenty or thirty or thirty-five years of that. Yeah. You know, and then when it got to Friday, you didn't stop. You didn't go to bed. I didn't even go home. <laughs> I didn't go home from Friday night till early Monday morning. Was going out time. Mm. There was somewhere After open. After parties, there's always there was somewhere, somewhere going open out. all the yeah, time. Yeah, always needed yeah. your dorm. And then the big raves come. You know, yeah. they, they were all weekenders. Yeah. And me and him yeah. would be sitting outside circus tents with ten thousand people mm. in it, now earning fucking fortunes, mm. like, like bags of money, ba bags like a sports. How, how bag. are you earning? How are you earning all that? At Tupperware. <laughs> uh, Pippa D parties, Tupperware. Were you throwing your own parties as well, though? Of course I was. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Taking you the know, door money. They I was the taking the door yeah. money, and I, I was obviously had people doing the other stuff. Yeah, you know there was. Um, it's part, part. Like we said, it all goes hand in hand. If you did, if you don't do control it. that environment. Yeah. If you, uh, and let, let the drugs run away yeah. and the shit and the, s right. if the shit if you didn't goes run there, it yourself yeah. then someone else is going to run yeah. in there and be doing it yeah. so if you're having a rave with five, five thousand people that's all you need people, one youngster yeah. going over on a fucking dodgy bit of yeah. gear or yeah. whatever you're fucked yeah, five thousand yeah. people ain't work. coming to yeah. your rave yeah. thinking there ain't no bills there yeah. Yeah. so you either have it and let anyone sell something in there mm. right, or have some control over what and who is selling what mm. and be seen by the Authorities to be throwing out every single drug dealer you can and mm. confiscating everything you can because you know you've got your own 20 there. Mm. Yeah, but you can't have a club with no drug dealers in it or you wouldn't have a club. No. It didn't work it, like that. It Especially wasn't that. before the booze, like the 88, 89 period, where there was no, before the licensing, I'm sorry, I forgot about that. You had to have the, the drugs. Yeah. That's the only reason they went there. Yeah. Because all they sold behind, I mean, had it happened in their younger day, people go to a bar and go, can I have four bottles of water, two Ribenas, an orange and a lemonade? Yeah? You'd got beat up for just saying that, you know, but that's, but that's all they were selling there. Yeah. So the pills were an essential part of the thing. And what design the pills come out? The the Rolexes, the Mitsubishis, the Snowballs, mm -hmm. the, you yeah. know, the... All the, 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 the New Yorkers, the New, oh, Dub, it, yeah. non-stop. Do you remember the first ones? I said, like the first ones, I, mean, I said the, ca the, the Callies. Yeah. Not the Doves, before the Doves, they'd done the Doves. The Callies, which were actually from America, that's what yeah. they called Callies. And they was going 25 pound a pop. Each, each. Yeah. 20, but they lasted all night. 
and that yeah. was clean as it was. And you was talk something. to someone now, and yeah. they go, "I had nine or seven pills." Yeah. Last you needed night. one back in the day. Well, well, one, you yeah. could have two. You could have yeah. got out your head eight hours each yeah. and a half each. Yeah, yeah. I said that to you know, yeah. the first half I had, Kelly. Yeah, yeah. But do you remember? Do you remember taking your first pill, Colton? Yeah, I said to you, didn't I? Yeah. But, 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 but me and Goldie, well, it was worse, I think yeah. most people can remember yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's just, it, it was like a, a whole new world opening up, wasn't it? Yeah. With the, with the music. Because yeah. working like, that door thing, yeah. I'm afraid it went to do my mind to admit this hmm? or not. Maybe, but maybe it, you had to have a certain... Or about you being a doorman, yeah? You could be seen having it, dancing away, sweating, going... Uh, you couldn't... That was so... Alien before yeah. pills come out, you know. What I mean, you had a a facade to, to you know, an image, yeah. an yeah, image, yeah, 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 image, yeah, yeah, yeah. That actually dropped the barriers for that, mm. and you was allowed to. Some people can handle it better than others. Some people you wouldn't know they'd had a pill. Yeah, you know mm. what I mean. Other people they only have to have a smell of it, and they're going, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, prosecco, what a prosecco. What is there? A, is there a decade for both of you that sticks out in your mind? Go, you know what? I loved that decade. Was it the 90s, the noughties, the 2010s? Where we 90s are now? 90s was nice. I think from when it started in '88. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and, and the warehouses, the yeah. and then going into the early '90s, and everyone knew their place. The everyone arches. Was just, yeah, there were so many good places to go. Yeah, and everyone knew each other. Yeah, it was quite a close circle. You know, it, it was yeah. really, wasn't it? You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. You know. And I, I had a few railway arches of my own then that the people were running for me, but I was still working as a doorman and all the clubs shut at two and three o'clock. Mm. So I'm dressed up as he was in a dinner suit with bow tie and all that <laughs> till three o'clock working the door at the West End. Then you would leave and go to a, a rave mm. that didn't start till 12 and went on till seven or eight in the morning. Well, no one had ever heard of that, a club opening yeah. up a... Yeah. Seven in the morning, you know. Well, that's what they started doing, didn't they? Like, and, and the whole... Open the club up at six o'clock the following morning because they knew that the normal clubs were emptying out and they, and it got to stage, where, where do we go next? Where do yeah. we go next? And then it went from that to the mo like Mondays, you know, like... Yeah. And Evan before, and before, like, yeah, before the Ease uh, actually brought it into its um, memorable thing, the rave scene, what it was was this... You was, there was somewhere, there was an era where if you'd have been seen with a packet of large ridges in your pocket, you were a druggie. Yeah. As bad as injecting heroin yeah. into your eyeball, you know, you smoked. And that was, you know, you was a druggie, yeah. right? But they found a place where you can all have a puff in there and that's all right. You can actually go to someone, yeah. oh, have a bit of that. Yeah. No one had ever, that alone would have made the place work. What, let alone who was Danny Rampling, what he was playing, drum, bass, house, speed, garage, garage, whatever it was. The fact that there was a building that you could go in and have a puff and not yeah. hide not it. Not hide it. Mm. Peace, yeah. that, that's what made it work. There was mm. so many people out there that puffed and that's a, mm. you know, that made it successful. Once they had them in that building, they come out with the, because it was a gay thing, the, mm. the ease was yeah. a, a gay thing, and that that we found I was with Richard Branson in um, New York, and we was in in one of his clubs, and he came back and opened up Heaven with after doing that, and I came back and opened up the Arches, but it was then, and then what what actually got me not the pills because I was a bit slow, not the pills, is I saw people queuing up to buy bottles of water. Yeah. <laughs> I, Walter, I couldn't yeah. get my head round it. As I said to you, the money we took just on the cold drinks. Well, yeah, well, you, you, you can buy, and buy a half a ton of empty heavy hand bottles, <laughs> fill it up, it's coming out the tap, <laughs> right, and then put it in the fridge. And when they buy a bottle of water, you take the top off for them and give it to them so there's no chops all over the dance floor. Mm. So every time I'm filling up a bottle of water, I'm going. Even if you bought them, they, they were like a bottle of water like that. Was a like a five ten p a yeah, bottle, right. you, and you buy them. Yeah. Cash and carry, and in them days they were a pound each. Yeah. You, imagine you doing that, a thousand of them. Yeah. Of course, oh, and they're yeah. buying one bottle, chipping it over their head, yeah. and, and then buying another yeah. one. Oh, that's what I got. Right, like, being yeah. like, cold, anything cold. And, and they wanted it in a, a, not a nightclub. You didn't need toilet paper, ashtrays, yeah. cigarette machine, Tampax machine, <laughs> nothing like that. A railway arch. <laughs> right? A railway arch <laughs> with a big. Set of speakers, done. Job done, yeah. yeah. Done, there ain't no carpet. 
And then you were talk. We were talking on the podcast when we did our last episode, Colton, about the Genesis. And yeah. you and Andy and Wayne got together and they were throwing the outdoor raves and then you took a percentage of the of the door money yeah. and then it was all about the bar and whatever. What was that like being in a rave out in a field back in the late eighties? Oh, just bad. Pretty it? much the same as it is now, but now yeah. they've now they've got it a little bit more under wraps where the M twenty five ones yeah, around yeah, like yeah. in Spinster around But but those little farmers bits. fields, were they? That you know like you, it's pitch black, and, and no mobile phones, but everyone, there's the convoy cars yeah, going down the entrance. Down a little and road. you go like, come but on. No, like, they hadn't got the know-how to actually have enough toilets there. Yeah. They no. didn't have the know-how to actually put down flooring before we got no. 5,000 people jumping up and down on a bit of mud, <laughs> right? They, they didn't have the flooring. Yeah. Now it's all done a bit like that, health and yeah. safety. And so when you were, when you were doing the doors of the outdoor, I raves, remember like like I said, you know, it's pitch black. You know, like it's yeah. like two, two, three o'clock in the morning. They've, they've got they've got the marquee. Uh, most farmers were letting their LM go, weren't they? Yeah, but the M25, most of it sloped. So I thought, like, we've all turned up there to go work. Pitch black, and I thought, fucking, this is a bit stumbly. I come out, out me nut. Fucking six o'clock in the morning, everyone's going home. My car was fucking sliding so, down the, the fucking grass <laughs> bank like that towards him twenty five. I tell you a funny one, tell you a funny one. Me and him, me and him went to a went to a rave at Leeds Castle. Yeah, we we, we went there by helicopter, not ours, someone else is doing it, you know, but there was a couple of people were doing it. And all the all the toilets was on the top of an hill with the little cubicles and they'd been all nailed together with scaffold planks going along the back of them, all nailed together. So they was all connected together about <laughs> 50 toilets, huh. little thing, and then 50 going in there. And when we landed the helicopter, the guys, I was waiting to come in and that, which is showing off, you know what I mean? And when they landed there, the wind blew the first set of toilets over the hill, <laughs> and then they're all connected up to all the other toilets, to all 50 toilets, <laughs> when they fell down the hill. So there's 50 people in there, got turds all over them. <laughs> 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 I think like, at the night time you, you had to be there. You had to be there. Yeah, but at the night time you never really you just wanted to get in the place, yeah. the music, you the did, lights yeah, were you there. Give a monkeys but about the in the morning, like you come out and we'd be like on the side of these motorways and, and it and I was looking like one day it was like, it was like seven o'clock, we're just shutting down and all that. And it, it, it like it was like Travis and it, they've dumped all their fucking settees and it, like there was a big pile of rubbish. And all the ravers pulled all the old chairs and settees, and they're, they're sitting there with a broken telly, right? They was having a chat, and ma they made like a front room up with all this broken furniture. It was all shit and cans. But and people did, but in the listen, daylight. Looking at them Honestly, raves now, of what states they came uh, out in the morning, yeah. of what states they come home with the makeup and the sweat and the, you know, in the, in the railway arch, I sprayed, I sprayed my roof, the ceiling black. And with a, with one of them paintball guns that was silver, yeah. I put little stars on the roof, and that was it. But when I had the party, because of the heat and the sweat oh, and all that, it, all, all the paint was dripping. It was all black. It was black. We we with a with a railway arch. Me and him, <laughs> we dug an hole in the middle of this railway arch with a, with his JTB, which is what he had, plant hire company, and we just dug and dug and dug until we got into a sewer of the flats, yeah. right? So. That, that was our toilet. Over the top of that, we put a load, a load of um, toilets, and that was where the toilets were. But when it rained, on, the, on where the manhole cover was, all the shit and all that was coming up, <laughs> but you couldn't see, because it was jet black. And if you couldn't dance and stood on the seat cover, uh, on the manhole cover, the bass would make you go, and you go, oh, get a load of me. You know I mean? <laughs> huh? But there's shit coming out of it. So you didn't know you we were did, in um... there doing that. We, you know, it was in Bow. It was near, near, the, near the old flyover, and when, it was a Genesis rave. Because sometimes you'd go to a warehouse, it'd be tipped off, and then you'd have to go quick move. You always have yeah. a backup plan. Yeah. So we went. It was two levels. Got in there, and it was an old tire factory. You Nobody know, where they store all the tires and all that. So like we were all in there. As me said, a lot of us fucking. We was we used to do a thing called Vikings. We were all out of our nut. Took pill, bit of Emil. And we used to do this thing, whoa, jump up in the air. Well, I parked my car upstairs at Whitechapel where we, we used to do the door. Yeah, that must have been clever. He parked his cars up the stairs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. you're a good driver, like. you. You're good. <laughs> I've come out of there, and I just thought, I was I was walking, because it's only about like, like a 10, 15 minute walk. Well, I thought the car's safe up that way there. There was nowhere to park. And people were crossing the fucking mm. road. 
and I, like that. And there was the women and kids and people were like looking at me like that. And it was like broad daylight, seven, half seven. I was walking back to the car and I'm thinking, like that. And I looked, so I thought, fucking hell, I love it. I looked, I got back to the, I looked to the reflection in the thing. All the dust, the tyre dust, had all come off the ceiling. And we like the black and white minstrels. Honestly, yeah. I was covered, right? <laughs> I remember going back to me, the bird who was head, then uh, f 30 minutes in the shower trying to get this fucking, <laughs> could dancing all night, it was in your skin, it was everywhere, do you know there what I mean? There is nowhere today, no. there is nowhere today, because it just wouldn't be allowed or no one would even go there, that had the heat that them clubs used to have. You yeah. used to walk into it and go, Generate. <clears throat> boom! Right? Yeah. It, it was like, some oh, sauna, a Bunsen burner on so, you. A giant sauna. As soon as you walked yeah. into the, the door, yeah, you yeah. were just dripping. There's none of that putting makeup on, yeah. looking nice. Your clothes are ironed, or you look sharp. They were just you just <clears throat> wet, soaked mm. through to the skin. Yeah. All it was, we, the more comfortable we, the stuff was, like baggy t-shirts, like dungarees, yeah, yeah. like the whatever, the, like cheap try. No one bought it. It wasn't a fashion statement. Yeah. But it was. And you couldn't see each other for a start. It was jet black. Yeah. Yeah. It was pitch black in there, you know. They... But do you know I still love, you know, like the, the six, seven, like the sunrise, and they, as the light come in, warehouses, like where they're broken windows, and you can start seeing oh, you're getting all romantic like, now, I know. <laughs> but you're getting all lovely. Like you're going to make me want to cuddle you. I know. <laughs> but do, 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 do you know when you actually see what people look like? And you just, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well. Fucking hell. And they've been there like seven, eight, nine hours. And everyone generally didn't know that they were actually a mixture between Fred Astaire, John Travolta. <laughs> you know what I mean? They all turned into like, oh, you've seen the Everybody moves. Everybody's <laughs> You've seen the moves. I'll, I'll moonwalk forward. How's that? You know, everyone thought that was on something. I've got to tell you a funny story. This is this was Genesis, right? So they got in this warehouse. It was fucking massive. Like up six, seven thousand people. But there was no offices there. We had like some sorts, and there was these stanchion things. You know, like a stanchion where you could walk round the, the yeah. look at the factory where the foreman's. And so what we done? We, we we made like a little office bit up there, like uh, like covered it up. So where the money went up, but we had to keep getting up this this uh, metal fucking ladder, get on the stanchion, walk the money for the drinks and all that. So yeah. so there's someone at the top. So I've done like two Callies, you know. Do you know what I mean? So maybe we make ice, ice cream steak. Uh, that was a new experience for you. I yeah. Hope, hope you pulled through. <laughs> Only just. So we like, I've gone up there, <coughs> started rushing. <coughs> and I'm thinking, so I've got to give the bag of money. I, I made sure they're all all right. So we're walking back. But there's a gap with the drop, with the ladder that goes down. But I, did, I, I thought I was still walking on the stanchion, <laughs> right? So I've gone like that. And all of a sudden I've gone, Doom, and I'm hanging, right? <laughs> Off the fucking bit of metal, like like the thing, the, the side of the station. I'm looking down, there's like 8,000 people going like that, dancing. I was going, you cunts, what's <laughs> you? I bet, no, bet none of you are going to catch me. And Steve went, Carl, where are you? I went, I'm here, you cunt, pull me up. And I was fucking, I just done it. Like, obviously, we were trying, I just hung for dear life. There's I couldn't so many, believe so it. Many funny I ones. just fucking. I did not see it. I was just totally oblivious. It just fell like that. And I just managed to catch the side of the walk bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Fuck, I was so it glad. It was a terrible time, out. I think, for a parent if you had daughters at that time. Because it was actually a love drug, the, yeah, you know, yeah. the MDMA yeah. for the people <clears> that haven't <throat> had it does actually, I'm afraid, make you feel really horny. Mm -hmm. And if you are having a shag and you've had a pill, for about it six, makes you seven, eight hours. Uh, for longer. <laughs> you know, it's almost like a, a Viagra that's pumping up yeah. your tool and a bit of weed is going to keep you awake for a good four or five hours. And you can listen to and, music while you're doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you can do it to a little bit of drum and bass or whatever. But it turns you in, if you've never had it before, you yeah. go explain that to someone. It yeah. did actually make you feel fucking Fucking, yeah. You were I'm, a better shag with it mm. than you were without it. Mm. And after having it, all you, the whole week revolved around... Oh, it's a long, long day Monday. Oh, I've got to wait all day Tuesday, Wednesday. Come on, it's half a week. We're nearly there. Thursday, come Friday. Done. <laughs> yeah. Don't you not fucking bollocks off. You know what I mean? From 8 o'clock Friday till 8 o'clock in the morning. Then, where you'd normally not have enough energy to have a shag, the pill helped you shag for another eight hours. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that was addictive. You know what I mean? Having and you told him you the loved time. them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I still Fucking do that. Blinding. I still do that. I still do that. I still do that. 
Just moving on to the books, gents. Let us know what what books have you both written. Well, Dave's done a few. Uh, yeah, You've had a couple, I'll, haven't I'll you, Dave? I've done, no, I've done about nine. Yeah. You've yeah. done nine books of you. Yeah. What's your favourite out of the nine? The fa- my f- favourite is "Stop the Ride I Want to Get Off," which was my first one. That was your and best book. My oh, best one. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Book. And and as was yours too. But it was. I then got infamous doing the Cratering's funeral, and very much had to quickly go and just as publicly go. I'm not doing that no more. So I wrote one book, never intended to write another one, to publicly go, stop the ride, I want to get off. That's yeah. what it's called. And that's leave me alone. I'm not really, I didn't want to be the top of any gangster tree. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, and it was from the heart, everything I'd done, I wanted to do, everything and all that. And I never expected to write another. It became a number one bestseller, yeah. which surprised my English teacher. And <laughs> after that, they went, oh, we'll do another one just about the rave scene. That went up number three or something, and then they went, do one about that court case. And so it, they shackled me with every yeah, other book. Do. Yeah, they, 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 But and the they, first one was yeah. the best one. Yeah, yeah, that yeah was all my day. Heart. That's from my yeah. And probably you like you you started... The, yeah, I the, think the, so. You was, I, the, I, you I, was I, the I one who started it all off. You, you started the celebrity gangster thing oh. to, like that. You, Thank you. You, you, you was the Come one here. who started all that. I love you for that. Yeah. No, you did. Yeah, you was a very close second. Yeah, uh, but, uh, but actually, yeah, but no. actually, blazing the trail to actually yeah. publicly go because people will write books because criminals yeah. Yeah. wanted a no public, no pictures, yeah. no comment, yeah. no comment to colour up down a little alley and yeah. all that to actually go. Dan, I'm writing books about it. Yeah. I'll come under a lot of fire from the younger ones. Mm. But at the time, I was going, no, nah, no, nah, you can't do that. You're wrong. Yeah. But after a while, every company was doing it because yeah. they was earning money. Yeah, right. So everyone there does. Yeah. At the time, I. Did anything come on top with that by going right? I'm celebrity. Well, not even. I, no. like I said before we don't want to mention the celebrity gangster, <coughs> yeah. but you put yourself out there. No, you don't right? call yourself a celebrity gangster. No, you don't call. That's what I'm saying. Other I, people. I do. say that yeah. Yeah. as in a compliment because he became his face was seen regularly That's on right. telly. He was doing books before a lot more people, and he, he encouraged the humor. likes of me. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. That's massively. Yeah. But people like me, I thought you know what, like. The, the thing in the thing in, it, it encouraged me to want to go out oh yeah, yeah. Doing that. it encouraged me to want to go and write a book yeah. and do it and my first book Muscle it was, started, was a franchise for Rise of the Foot Soldier yeah. and that was what 2003 yeah 2002 that 2002, came 2002. Out. and yourself uh, what was the the ride what, roughly what year before, mate. But yeah before that no, no, it's what, whatever you got 1946 wasn't it my yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're so <laughs> immature, <laughs> you're so <laughs> immature. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> All and you lot from over there, <laughs> you're so immature. And for you, and for you, Colt, with the doing the book Muscle, what did that do for your profile? Oh, it throws it right up. Well, you? yeah, it's, obviously, you know, at the time John Blank, uh, John Blank, when he was, like, he had everyone. He yeah. was just anyone. Uh, if you for a can at someone, you'd write, you could write, he'd write a book about it, yeah. And if any violent story, he had this craving, didn't he? That everyone, yeah. but. We, it's we, what we you muscle. do with the notoriety. Is, yeah. It's you. You get the notoriety, right? With the book, boom! All of a sudden, you're this. But it's whether you're clever enough to do what with it. Yeah. Yeah. You got. To, you got to have a team in in place yeah. to actually do something with this notoriety, rather than just walk round and get off on it. And it's how you talk. To, talk. You, you know, like, like I said, before, you touched the point. Is like. Talk from the art how you would be. Don't become a, this pretend character, this this a character. Yeah, if, if you're Dave Courtney talking to a couple of that's you talking mm. in your book, in your words, and that's what that's that, that's the only way to do it, isn't it? Yeah. I never had the physique to call a book of mine muscle. To be honest, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, what could it have been called? Belly. Belly. Belly, yeah. <laughs> Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. You're a nice guy. <laughs> we love you, Dave. We love you. You know what I mean? But I wrote mine as in, stop the ride, I want to get off. Yeah. Right? The next one, raving lunacy. Yeah. Right? The good next names, one, good the ride's back on. Yeah. Right? You know what I mean? That, that's what... You want to start naming your book, Mar Manor, yeah. the artist dormant in yeah. London, yeah. Yeah. fighter of the... Top where, where did the, stop the ride? I want to get off. Come from exactly that. I got I got infamous through doing the Cratering funeral. That made me um, everything I ever did after that was like gangster orientated. So the authorities thought the doormans. I ended up losing all my doors because they thought it was all the police went. It's connected to the craze, yeah. right? 
you can't have, you, you know, you shouldn't, you won't have a license for a telly, let alone a nightclub. You sat Courtney, mm. and the, and then all the films that I was in, they're going, you know, the police would approach them and say, we don't want him going on the television, getting a little bit of hero worship because that's that's so glamorising crime. That, yeah, exactly right. right. You know, you, you could, oh, yeah. So they they shut me down. It actually crucified me. It brought me to the attention of the world, the funeral, but it also brought me to the attention of the authorities, which crucified me. Mm. And then they brought out a new law that you can't glamorise crime. So then I couldn't be on the telly, or the journalists that have been writing about me for 30 years, I know, and they couldn't write a, a decent story. What was the law change there? You said there was a... And also, you, yeah, they, they wouldn't pay you. Do you know, like if you did a show, a documentary, yeah. where like in the old days, you could like go, well, we'll give you a monkey, come and do a bit of filming yeah. or whatever. That, that all stops. All they can give you is expenses for yeah. your day out. Yeah. Your bit but then we earned a good living, you know me and him. We, yeah. we travelled the world doing stand-up. Mm. Yeah, you know, um, after dinner speaking yeah. and audience with Audiences. and all that. So we've done, we've done a million. Colton, did you think, we know when you done the, when you brought your book out, did you think that anyone wanted to take a pop at you after that? <sighs> if you, yeah, you if, put if, yourself if, on offer to be rid of, like, to have a go at who's he thinking? I, 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 you know I mean? honestly yeah. If I felt like I felt that, I wouldn't have wrote the book. But I, I oh, also I'm going to beg to differ there. Uh, Hold it. Look. I'm going to beg to differ there. You wouldn't give a monkey, <laughs> right? I, I'm, I'm, I'm only saying a little bit of cold and I know, right? That if you thought it might upset someone, I won't do it. That's shit. <laughs> Man, that's shit. Oh. The fact that you're a West Ham support or any Millwall support mm. would go, we ain't going write the book. Right? And you know, yeah, you're yeah. going to get criticism, yeah. whatever you do. And me being South London, everyone from North London, put on. Yeah. And, and vice versa. So I don't actually agree with him now. He, he wouldn't, oh, well, I thought, if I, if I thought he'd upset someone, I wouldn't do it. Mm. I don't believe him with that. All man. right. You get what I mean now? Yeah. Forgive yeah. me. No, I didn't do it like, as if I thought about it. I just did it because yeah. I wanted to do it and say how I wanted to say mm. it. If I didn't like someone, I'd say I didn't like them. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Did it cause yeah. you any ag afterwards? <sighs> jealousy is a, is a terrible thing. Snide. Snidey jealousy yeah. Yeah. behind your back. It's the only, like, it's the only yeah. emotion that n never yeah. raises its head as itself, yeah. jealousy. No one ever comes yeah. up and goes... It's really mugging me off. You got a book out and you're doing Jealousy's really well. Jealousy's got a bit of worse. Right, they come right? out with a load of other things. Yeah. He's this. He's yeah. Dave, Dave oh, suffered it more than me because he, he was what he was one of the, the, the beginnings. Like, like he started it off like and, and, and made it like. Then all of a sudden, it, like John Blake jumped on board. He yeah. was getting our bastards, Kate Quay, and everyone wanted to do gangster books, Dorman books, this book, that book, and everything else. And what he done, he, then everyone stopped going. Oh. Yeah, it was it was all right then, wasn't it? Because, yeah. but in the, in the beginning, it, before it, I come under I, I come under fire for me. <laughs> yeah, because it's it is it's it's like it's, 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 it's I was talking snidiness. about a hidden world, yeah. and they won't come up to me and say no that yeah. or whatever. No, they they write it, and then a computer come out, then a Facebook came out, and it's then I've got a million people following me mm. off. You understand what I mean? But the positives of writing the book, you told it. Your story and the positive knock on effects you created Rise of the Foot Soldier movie. Yeah, the franchise, yeah. The franchise. Yeah. Have you seen the Rise of the Foot Soldier, Dave? I've seen all of them. I was, I was there. I've not watched none. I've only one and two. I've watched one. There was a premiere last night. It was, night, it was it? the premiere of the first film. Yeah. Dave was. We are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't, look, Terry's. Uh, I know Terry very well. Yeah, I, 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 what we did, when he was doing all the um, One Nation raids, I was looking after his money and supplying half of his doorman and. You know, and I put him as a as a as the star of my film when I first made the film, right? When I first made my movie Hell to Pay, and we all chipped in, and everyone, you know, I took him to Cannes and all that. But because he saw the aggravation that I had in bringing it out, they just banned it because it was all gangsters playing gangsters. No, no real reason. It won Best of Group at Cannes, my film, because he saw the aggravation I had in doing it. When he wanted to carry on doing the film world. He just ignored and pretended he didn't know Dave Courtney. No, blanked everyone. Right, you he, know, done just, all, yeah. Well, I, 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 we've all got our own little gripes with all different people, but me personally, I was hurt by it. It generally did hurt me a little bit because I've helped build that man. I mean, every I've still got the... Me and him wrote his first book together 20 odd years ago. Me and him wrote a book together. I've still got it right at my house to show anyone that wants to have a look at it. And then later on, he's potentially doesn't actually know me or my missus. 
and because he don't want to be associated with the naughty boy thing and then he can carry on with his world. He'll grab hold of his story and he's got his own gripes with him. But for me, it hurt me the fact that, and I have seen it, people pay dearly for being my friend, right? You pay dearly for being associated with Dave Courtney because the authorities don't like the glamorising crime and oh, you're gangster oriented, you know. And to get on in life, you they want to be your mate to get so far, and then they will get they so user. far, and then being your mate is actually stopping them getting any further. They so do use as they well, do. Dave. Of course they do. People use you. Of course they do. We're stepping stones. Right. Because you're a commodity. Absolutely. Yeah. Have you found you've been used? Everybody's used. Yeah. Yeah, you're, yeah we're all commodities. If yeah. we weren't commodities, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing. Just by being a doorman, a good doorman, a top doorman, you're a commodity mm. for that club. Mm. You know, there ain't no like, loyalty. Uh, you no. like to think there's loyalty around it, yeah. but in the in the end, you know, there's there old school if people. The, if uh, the police uh, come in and go, set court. But not, I would say seventy percent are probably. I mean, like, I was, I say more. Dave, I've used him as a massive stepping stone. I've always been quite clicky because I've got the football boys with me who I've grown up with as kids. But still people use exactly just done the same thing. Use me and all that. But everyone wants to be a fucking chief after about yeah. six months. Every, well, why are you the governor? Yeah. Is it, you can only have got, one person. You can only have one general. When anyone yeah. says to us about the trouble, the world today, how are you going to go? The problem here is today is no one understands the importance of the pecking order. Yeah. Right, there has to be a private, a corporal, a sergeant, a captain, a major. There has to be a pecking order. Now, everyone wants to be in charge. Yeah. And it don't work that way. Yeah. No. You're all into fighting each other and that's what makes it easy. And at the end of the day, also, like, you know, right, whatever the wages are, you come and work. And say you give hypothetically, everyone gets £100 each. If you're, the, you're running that gaff and that's your security whatever, and you get like three grand, that's what they come and work for, the hundred quid. But not to be a partner and tell you that we want more money. And that's what happens as well. They forget that they're being put there by us and then they think they've got the, the I, I should be getting what you're getting. I'm standing there, no. That's what you, that you First you of all, know. I didn't know you knew words like hypothetically. That's I know, I just, I'm very, I just very of, impressed with that. I, I but what he's trying is, to say, here. if you're gonna do a bank robbery, the driver gets, that much, mm. and he don't can't ask for a more because he's just a driver. The bloke that runs in and does the bit yeah. of work gets that much. The bloke that's on the inside job, the inside man, and the job gets that much. And the geezer who planned it all gets that much. You mm. know, you're all on different wages. Yeah. You ain't all partners. You're all, you know, it's the same and as an and army. Order, isn't it? There, yeah. there, there will be some people who are your right hand men, who are there, and you need them because they're your, they're your arm. They and your and you will you give them extra dough. But they've deserved that. Yeah. But but majority of them, they want to be dormant, they come and work, and, and I mean, that's why they're, that's why they're called soldiers. Mm. Yeah, all the same. Yeah, you just got you've got different talents. You're just a soldier. Yeah, in an army, you're not all crack shots. One of you's a cook. One of you drives a lorry. One of you builds a bridge. One of you drives a submarine. One of you flies an aeroplane. Mm. One of you's an ambulance bloke. Yeah, you're all soldiers. You've mm. all got your own little bit of thing that makes an army. Mm. That's that's what my yeah. firm is. And that's yeah, what his yeah. firm is. Yeah, yeah. Everyone had their corner. Like, you know, if you used to be, like, like Dave, Freedom, he hated the club scene. He stayed on the door all night. He didn't want to be inside listening to any music. Who's, who's, no, the, who's no. this? Who's this? Dave, Dave Legino. No, Dave Legino. He's, he's dead now. He's, he's, yeah. a, he's, he's a very famous doorman. He was, everything he'd done, he was, was a chop. Of, yeah, a lot of acting. Right? Prize but, fighter, um, everything, Harry brilliant. Potter. And wrestling, brought, wrestling, the yeah, top wrestler. He brought, brought out blind records. Geezer, yeah. Fantastic blind fighter geezer. as a doorman, yeah. courageous to the point of very stupidity. dry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Brave to the point of stupidity. Yeah, yeah. But he ended up just going out to the um, Arizona desert with no water and no thing. Just walked as far Friend as he could into the middle of the desert and just sat down by a cactus and died. You're joking, mate. And that's how he killed wow. himself. And he was on news yeah. at ten and everything. He was in Harry Potter. Every he's a top doorman. Yeah, yeah. I met him at that night. The, the night I met him with you, and there was a shooting. I'm lying on the floor holding his leg, and he's standing there like that. Cowboys, you won't walk yeah, cowboy, cowboy boots. boots. <laughs> Always walk <laughs> cowboys. Yeah, yeah. He, 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 he was like a bit of a biker, like in his day. You know what I mean? How big was he? 
Big lamp. Yeah, yeah lamp, 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 lamp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lamp, yeah. yeah. Come but, on, uh, he had some good stories, but like he had on his toes from him yeah, and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But people don't know about. But did you ever come across Lenny McLean? Yeah, Roy I Shaw? did a lot. Yeah. yeah. Did you? Yeah, I, I didn't like Lenny. You didn't like him. I think he was a bully. I like Roy. Out of those two, who do you reckon would win a fight? I think Roy had the biggest heart. But Lenny was. But Lenny had the size. Yeah, he was. He was. He was like. He was like he, he said was as big as and his that, 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 that little Lenny was a bully thing. Right? I've been asked yeah. that the other week. Right? He's, he weren't actually a bully, bully all the time. It's all of us, every one of us, in certain company. You can get a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when the whole world's going wow. And you've just wrote a book called The Governor, which is a very big pedal stool to sit no. upon. You know what I mean? When, yeah, it's a big yeah. pedal. Sometimes you can fall into the trap, maybe, of being a little bit. Yeah, but he weren't actually an horrible, nasty bully to everyone he met. He weren't, weren't true. He was a debt collector. Yeah. You, you don't get nice, polite debt collectors. Mm. You know, the, the geezer that you're going to get the money off of thinks you're a bully. Mm. Right? He, was a, he was one of the best debt collectors there has ever been. Right? But it weren't. Bullying, it's a job. You're knocking on someone's door going, give me the fucking money you owe. Mm. Yeah, or I'll break you in half, I'll hurt you. Right? He'd call it bullying, You're, it's a job. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? I love Roy yeah, too. Yeah. I'm a big Roy yeah. fan too, but they're too, you know, Lenny it's, it's, it's was different. a fighter, right? Roy was a criminal. Yeah. Roy was a armed robber, criminal, bank robber, he, shoot uh, you, yeah, right? Yeah, you know what I mean? Fuck, that could yeah. also yeah. have a row. Lads, how old are we? We're both in our 60s. What's it like? Well, there's only a couple of weeks between that. There's a couple of weeks days. between, yeah. yeah. What's it like? What's it like? What does it feel like being in your 60s? It's fucking horrible, isn't it? Yeah, I hate it. Yeah. Yeah, everyone only tells it's you. Blowing old is horrible. You're not getting your aches and pains and all yeah. that shit. It's not nice, but we've had a very good life. We you've can't lived, actually You've lived, both lived a very a eventful very life. And still we're yeah, yeah. alive. And, and, and we're stories. entitled to be aching and paining yeah. with what um, we've done, right? But I've, I've, I'm not moaning about it. I wouldn't change another day to be nicer now I'm old or feel a lot better now or looked after my body better to have a little bit of better time now I'm 60 and 70. Yeah. I'm glad I cracked it as hard as I did for as long as I did when we did. Do you think you're still lucky to be here at 63? I know I'm yeah. lucky to be here at 63. Yeah. yeah, I don't actually want to be here when I'm 75 and all that. Would you like it in a beaker, Mr. Mm. God? I'm not actually looking forward to all <laughs> no. of that. Yeah, I'm but fucking I'm enjoying athlete. every yeah. single Big day. Yeah. The reputation that we have had mm. when we was active, to still want to have a fight with you now. Yeah. Not everyone runs up and goes, oh, hello Dave, loves yeah. your book. Yeah. Hello Carlton, great well, film. Well, they, they still want to take a book. Oh, of course they do. Yeah. It's a scalp, isn't it? You know yeah, what I mean? It's a nuts in the belt, is that, isn't is it? That, is that the same with you as well, Carl? I reckon Dave gets more of that than, than what we're saying, because I'm like, sort of, I mean, like, you're, he's more on show, like, he's he, like, access more accessible, but like, I don't trust, the, he does parties, he does everything, see, I don't trust all people, like, yeah. loads of people around me, I only trust people I know, and yeah. so that's, that's the way I am, but I think, yeah, and look, listen, one, it, it's, someone always wants to be a Dave Courtney, a Colton Leach, and, and even if they're like 18, 19, they're sort of living out with an old man, yeah. to them, they ain't, do you get me? Yeah. But all the old kids now, like none of them can fight. Yeah, they're all twenty packs like that. That dripping wet with big fucking machetes that look yeah. the bigger than their arms. It's, it, you know, it's all changed. Have you changed. have you lads got any advice for the twenty year olds now getting into that criminal underworld? Don't. Well, it's it's changed yeah, from yeah, our yeah, days. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a different world. Don't. It's not even about, it's not even an you're, underworld. You're, you're being left into it. It's, a, it's got not even no an underworld, it's a culture world now. Yeah. Because the cultures have took over the world. Like, the, the, you know, you, don't, you can't go to this area because that's where the Somalians are or the, or the West Indians. You know? and, it's, and that's how it's sectioned off. The world's, London, it's becoming like ghettos, isn't it, if you know what I mean? Whereas we, in our day, yeah. we could roam around London, you all the different, yeah. everyone knew everyone. And I think it's more. We're going through a trans transgressional period. The British underworld is going through a a very um, multiracial 
violence level is yeah. going up. You know, it's the going old, the, old London, the old London gangsters, the, their roles and the way they are. Yeah. They're, they're, they're a dying breed. Yeah, they're, that they're was a romantic breed. era. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think London's getting naughtier and naughtier as time's going on? I don't, it all depends what say, you mean by naughtier. You I would say like every, like, you see, for me naughty. You know, there was more every, fights. Every there was more punch ups at football every yeah. Saturday night. Um, 25, 30 yeah. years ago, there was more fights. Yeah. But, but there weren't more people. But there weren't, there yeah. weren't more people dying. Was That's there? all they do is they pull a blade out and stab someone. You know what I mean? Or they, they, they can get hold of a gun. They, they, they just like, go like that and fucking just like. Well, it's not if you can get hold of a gun no. anymore. No. It was quite hard to get hold of a gun 20 or 30 years ago. It weren't an easy thing. But nowadays. They're coming into this country by the weight, yeah. not one or two or three or four. They're coming in by half a ton. That's how they buy mm. firearms. I'll have half a ton's worth, or I'll have two ton, or I'll have a ton and a half. Yeah. Right? Not how many. Yeah. Right? They buying it. It's coming into this country by the ton. Mm. But uh, is there, if yeah. you were to, if you were going to go back and relive your life again, would you be living your life in your twenties, thirties, or forties or fifties? Something you can't see, like. My, I've got two like two lives. Like one is my football life, which I'm obsessed with. Yeah. So, for me, I would always go back into my twenties fighting on the terraces. I can't help myself. That was my thing. Yeah. You know. But, uh, but, you know, like you said, would you change things? We're here now, we, and that's why we're here because we've got stories to tell. Yeah. You know. Mine would be it. my my prime would be in my thirties, late thirties, early forties. That yeah. would be my. Pinnacle, yeah. Mm. That was when I was earning money, doing the raves, done the. Yeah. yeah that, that was when it all started happening for me, driving the Rolls Royce, buying the castle. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that. But after saying that, my 50s was really horny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my 20s was sexy. Mm. Yeah, my 30s was my favourite, but there's been, uh. there's been nothing wrong with mm. being from 50 to 60. I'm still, I'm fully aware that I'm living a much better, more entertaining, happier, more fulfilled life than most of the people I know. Mm. Yeah? I'm still enjoying myself a lot better than everyone I'm looking at. Mm. You understand me? I'm still getting the doors open and I'm earning a few quid and the opportunities to go here, there and everywhere. At my age now, I'm, I'm, I'm still reaping the benefits mm. of the Dave Courtney of old. But you also get the crosses as well. Mm. Yeah, like I say, you get away with it at the time, the crime. You might get away with it and the not guilties and all that and you make yourself a bit infamous. But the the authorities never forget it. No, they, they will don't. make you pay for being Dave Courtney mm. or Colton every opportunity they get. Mm. Continually, I'm still waiting to get my driving licence back after 14 years. Mm. Yeah, which they won't give me it back. They give me a... A hair follicle test every time I go to get my licence back and they go, nope, you've had this or you've had that in the last six months. I shaved all, I told you, I shaved all under my arm, shaved my chest, went to go and get my driving licence and they went, oh, you're shaved, Mr Courtney, I went, yeah. He said, okay, took my trousers, turn around. They took one out of my arsehole. They <laughs> put, pushed me and took that and they said, because I got... Well, a driving licence. <laughs> <laughs> Mobile phone, <laughs> steering wheel. <laughs> mobile phone. People used to have proper arseholes in yeah. You had a phone up your arse in prison years ago, right? When phones were like quite big. Do you understand what I mean? You had to have one of them up your arse now that you can get two or three out your arse. I'll tell you a funny story. I'll tell you a funny story. I don't know if I told you this one, boy. I'll tell you a funny story. I was in prison and I borrowed someone's phone to use. It's all wrapped. It was a flip phone. And he's got it on vibrate. So it's all wrapped up in clean film. And I've undone it, made the phone call, wrapped up in clean film again. That's I've shut it, I've turned it from the vibra vibrate to ring. It's up inside my arse, I'm in the queue in the dinner <laughs> queue. I'm standing in the fucking dinner right. queue. And my arse all went, diddly doo, diddly doo, diddly doo, And I was like, Jesus! Oh my God. And now I'm trying to hide the fact that it's making all that noise by going, Every, as, it, as the noise is going, I was going, oh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, I'm going to shit myself, excuse me, just trying to run out. But my arse, I was going, do 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 Is there anything at the moment in your 60s now you lay it, you lay in bed at night and have any regrets? I've slept with some ugly fucking birds. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to be honest. Colton. I don't uh, yeah, I think... There has to be, but I can't yeah. remember, Mark, you know, from... There has to be, yeah. Good, good. Yeah, I'll just... Uh, 
I don't know. I, yeah, it's, it's, I just, you, you, you could sit there at, 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 for fucking for weeks on end thinking about everything, your regrets. So the best thing is don't think about the regrets. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, this is like killing down. You know, you know, you think, fuck it, I wish I'd done that. It's going to be six months to die. Yeah. But I think you just got to carry on every day. Yeah. Who you are and what you are. Yeah. Dave, and what you regret? Yeah, any regrets yeah, for you, yeah, Dave? Yeah, I have. Yeah, I've made some regrets. I've made some wrong decisions with certain women. Yeah. Snap. Yeah, I've made some wrong decisions there. Yeah. But what you might regret today, in time, it might turn out to be a really good thing that. Yeah. You've done so, you're regretting it now, but after five years' time, away from the world, everything will change. You ain't regretting it, it was a touch, so you understand yeah. I mean, what you're regretting at the time or at certain times. So, the fact that I've got no big holes in me, I haven't done 25 years in prison, you know what I mean? I ain't got the terrible regrets. I've yeah. made some silly decisions that at the time, they were the right one, I thought. You were talking about make regrets for women and stuff. How many kids you got, Colton, with how many different women? About ten with eight women. Dave? Oh, come here. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. That's come here. I, 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 I salute her. Yeah. <laughs> You're I'll entitled say, to write a book called uh, Muscle. My 12th grandchild. Amazing. So, three months ago, yeah, another grandson. Amazing. Um, yeah. Ten different kids, ten kids with eight yeah. different women. Wow. I think there was a couple of more that I bumped into. Along the way, <laughs> so six and three women. Six and three women. Yeah. So, so, are you both at peace right now in your sixties, moving on, and what you, what's the future hold for you both? Um, I get frustrated now at my age. Yeah, I think frustration. Like I let things go that I wouldn't have done when I was younger, and that frustrates me. I get angry with myself. Do you understand? Sometimes I understand what you mean. I, I allow right people. Right? to do things that I wouldn't have done years ago, but obviously because we're older. And then I think, like, they say your kindness is a weakness. You know, like, I, but that's that's my only thing. But it's, it's called growing old, and yeah. you've got to accept the fact, you know what I mean? You, you do change. But I still get annoyed with myself. Yeah. But that's what, you know, that is the anger that keeps you alive. Yeah. I need that anger. What keep you going? Well, I need, I need it to, to, yeah, I need it to make me go look, get up and do that, things. I don't yeah. need that, man. I you don't know? need that. You don't need that. I'm quite, no, I'm quite happy with my little life at yeah. the moment, yeah. Is it calm, your it, life? It's, it's, a, yeah, calm it's, a lot, it's a lot calmer. I don't mean every day, Dave. No, 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 I know what you're it's saying. Just, yeah, you need, you need yeah, that to make you go, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when I, when I fuck up, I need to be angry with myself. Yeah. Not, not, not get on the phone. I have to, like... The trouble with being you know, me or him is people won't give you certain good bits of advice. They'll let you go on and make that mistake because it's, Carl and I telling him what he's doing is wrong. Yeah. Yeah, where they could have helped, you understand what I mean? Mm. So, but I'm quite happy with what's happening with me at the moment. I'm, I'm, I'm involved in the BKB um, bare knuckle boxing. Yeah, with Joe those boys, Joe and Jim, had them on. Hey, listen, I'm, I'm enjoying great, that part of my life at the moment. Yeah. Just being involved in that, good and watching everyone else fight and not having to do it myself. Yeah. that's quite cool. That's a tough yeah. sport, isn't it? Oh bare wow! Knuckle. I watch it. I think, jeez. Wow! And they're not actually. The old fashioned thing of bare knuckle boxing was like a big fat old paddy or yeah. a couple of um, travellers all yeah. doing it. These are now athletes. Yeah. These yeah. are now ex European and British champion yeah. and, you know, that's got too old to do it. You know, these are fight, fighting mm. machines. But every time you get hit, you get cut. It's bare yeah. knuckle. You get, yeah. you know, and they're hurting Proper each knockouts, other. Isn't yeah, it? They're, they're, that whole, that whole um, combat sport thing, the MMA, MMA and, you know, it's gladiatorial. Yeah. I actually think the word is sexy to watch. Mm. For a man or woman, that is, well, you know, I wish mm. I could do that. Mm. You know, I, I couldn't do that when I was at my prime. Mm. And we were saying, Carlton, you're happy in, in where you're at now. You've got all your grandchildren around you. Yeah, well, well, no, so I said to you, my priority now is my, my children lost out on my lifestyle. And I said to you, uh, and my priority now is my grandchildren. Just, I want them to walk through the door and not <coughs> as cold and leash. I, I want to be called grand grand or granddad. Yeah. And I just want to be but what my dad was. How he, uh, I said to you before, yeah. how my dad was with, with my daughters and my family. Yeah. They adored him. And I, that's all I want. Yeah. And my, my grandkids come in, they jump all over me and, and like muck about and all that, you know. Lovely. Yeah. Lovely. Gents. 
I've really enjoyed this. It's been an absolute blinder to have you both yeah. come down here in the yeah. studio yeah. down in Bournemouth. Yeah. Dave, again, cracking stories, Carlton, last couple Coke of days. I've enjoyed you. I've enjoyed you, I've um, enjoyed you. Man. Cheers, Cheers boys. Yeah. Yeah. And you, Cheers, thank you very much. Nice man. one. Had a good one today. Yeah. Cheers, Colt. Yeah, absolute pleasure. Good man. Cheers, boys. Thank you.